Yo, yo, people, what are going on? I don't know, it's the King Boss. Welcome back to Rounds Tech Hub. Today, I'm going to be looking at Google Bard here on the left and also looking at Microsoft Bing Chat here on the right. I'm going to show you guys how I use these things. First things first, what is Google Bard and what is Microsoft Bing Chat? Both of these services are essentially search engines, but they have been designed to be large language models. All that means they both have a massive, massive database of all the information. Well, not all, but a lot of information in those databases. And when we ask it a question, rather than simply spitting out websites that we can go and look for the answers, it gives us the answers after it's looked through all the information on books, websites, music, videos, videos, whatever it is. So again, both of these are large language models, LLMs. What I want to do in this video is walk you guys through how I actually use these services. I normally have both of them open on my computer at the same time. I do have two screens, so I'll have a tab with Google Bard and I'll also have a different tab with Microsoft Bing Chat. This is a project I want to start working on very soon. So I'm going to just give you a preface of the topic. So what I want to do, I want to use a Raspberry Pi. It doesn't have to be a Raspberry Pi. It can be any small-ish computer that can fit in a car. And what I want to do with this, I want to create ANPR. And ANPR stands for Automatic Number Plate Recognition. And this is a service used by companies, by the police, by traffic lights, speed cameras, and what it does, it essentially does optical character rec recognition on your license plate, records or figures out what your license plate is, and then it can do some information with that. My system, what I want to do, this is just a personal project of mine, what I want to do is using Microsoft Azure or um, Amazon AWS, I want to create a cloud storage, I want to have a database of car details, driver details in my database in the cloud. I want to use my Raspberry Pi, a camera attached to it and Python to connect to that database. And whenever my Raspberry Pi with the camera detects or reads the number plate of a car, I want it to go and search the database for that car and do something and give me some information back. So that's what I want to do. I have no idea how to start this. However, I do know how to use Python. I know how to design I know how the camera connects. I can do some Python scripting, but I don't know the overall best way to do this. So I'm going to start doing some research. And there's some of the research questions I'm going to be using. I'm going to type into both Google Bard and also into Microsoft Bing Chat. So one of the first things I would want to know how to do is, for example, how do I install Python on the Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 5 is out now. So how do I install? Actually, what I could do, show a wonderful feature that this has, I can ask it the question by speaking. How do I install Python on the Raspberry Pi 4? Press enter there. And on this side, I'm going to ask exactly the same question, but look how Bing Chat answers. How do I install Python on the Raspberry Pi 4? Searching for install Python on Raspberry Pi 4. To install Python on your Raspberry Pi 4, you can follow the steps below. Open the terminal on your Raspberry Pi 4. Type the following command to update the package list, sudo apt get update. Type the following command to install Python 3, sudo apt-get install Python 3. Verify that Python 3 is installed by typing Python 3 version in the terminal. If you want to install the latest version of Python, you can download it from the official website and install it from sources. To install Python on the Raspberry Pi 4, you can follow these steps. 1. Update your package list and existing packages. sudo apt-update. sudo apt-upgrade. 2. Install the Python 3 package sudo apt install python 3 3 verify that python is installed correctly python 3 version so there you saw me ask both google bard and bing chat or chat gpt4 and microsoft bing the same question i don't prefer the way any of these does things for example when i ask google bard the question it gives me the answer in a textual form, even though I ask the question using my voice. When I asked Microsoft Bing Chat the question using my voice, it actually read the entire answer to me. And I think the way the answer on the right in Microsoft Bing Chat is presented, the way it has links, the way the, just the way things look are slightly better, even though they look very similar to me. If I wanted Google Bard to read the answer out to me, I would have to click on that speaker icon there and it would start reading it to me. Microsoft Bing Chat doesn't actually allow you to pause when it's reading, as far as I can tell. However, Google Bard does. So I think it's a bit of, I'm in a bit of a weird space where I really like both of them, but neither of them are perfect for what I want. For example, I would like if Google Bard would simply read the answer out to me if I asked it a question using my voice. I would also like Microsoft Bing Chat to be able to pause the audio after it started reading. 
both of these are very 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 good but this is how i use them and as you can see both of them gave very similar answers so nothing is crazy different about them i do like how nice and shortly curated the answers in Microsoft Bing are. I think Google Bard is a bit extensive, but I get why they've done it because it's a relatively technical process. So they've tried to explain everything line by line, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Another question I might want to ask is something along the lines of write me a Python script that does optical character recognition live using Python and OpenCV. I already have this question. I'm just simply going to paste it in both of them and ask both of them to search for that information and see what comes up. Perfect, there we go. Both of these services, so Google Bard and Microsoft Bing Chat, gave me very, very respectable answers. I have not copied and pasted this into anything to know if they work. I'm making the assumption that they work. This is very, very impressive, very detailed, and this is one of the reasons why I use this. So I don't, I no longer have to go and scour the internet to figure out how to do this and how to do that. I simply ask the question. I know relatively what I want to ask. I ask the question as trying to be as specific as I can be, and it just gives me an answer. So now, when I come to actually program this, I'm going to sit down and design this whole system at some point. I'm going to sit down and have pseudocode and flowchart and block diagrams, uh, not circuit diagrams to be fair, because I don't have any circuitry to worry about. But when I sit down to program this, once I've installed all my programs, software's dependencies and everything else I need, I can simply copy and paste one of these answers or both of them and see how well they work. I know that's the wonderful, amazing thing about using these services. Please, people at universities, people at college, do not simply ask it for the answer and copy and paste everything, right? You need to show and explain every single process that you followed. So I recommend you guys doing it the old fashioned way. It's a really good tool to learn how to do something, but always, always try to break it down and do it the old fashioned way. Colleges and universities have a software called Turnitin, which they use. It's also built into Google Classroom and Microsoft Teams. And what this service does, it actually go ahead and check the work that you've submitted to see if it's been copied directly from some AI, some large language model or from someone else. So please, please, please don't do that. This is how I intend to start using this. This is going to make my development process much, much, much quicker. Again, this is for a personal project that I want to work on, something that I want to do in my free time. This is not something that is linked to any coursework or schoolwork. This is something I'm genuinely interested in, and this is going to make my life a hundred, a million times easier. This is going to be my last question, and it's going to be creating a database schema. So what this is, is just giving the overview of what the database needs to look like using maybe two or three tables. So let's ask Google Bard and Bing Chat. Create me a database schema with car details and driver details. Let's let that run. And I'm also going to ask Bing Chat the same thing. Create me a database schema with car details and driver details. Searching for database schema with car details and driver details. Sure, I can help you with that. Here is a sample database schema for a taxi service that includes tables for drivers and credit cards. Create table driver. Driver underscore ID INT primary key. First underscore name Varchar, 50, not null. Last underscore name Varchar, 50. There we go. We have two database schemas created. Now, I would have to say the one on the left is more easily understood by someone who doesn't have much database knowledge. They can go in and do some research and figure this out. The one on the right feels like if you know what databases are, if you know how to use SQL, if you know how to create tables, then this is going to be the one that you want. This is why I use both of them, because even if you ask both of them exactly the same question, in most cases, you're going to get different answers and the different answers sometimes sparks an idea. So now that I, I've seen both these ideas, I was just going to go straight into using, for example, the one on the left. But the one on the right makes a lot of sense as well. So I can design using the one on the left. I can use the one on the left as like a blueprint of what needs to be done. And the one on the right can be how it is actually done. So two stages completed in one go by asking both these language models exactly the same question. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, share and stay tuned.